Sunnah Rahmani Rahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahadhatin abada adada ni'amillahi wa alihi. Allahumma atina mladunka rahma wa alimna mladunka alma. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana. Innaka anta al-alimul hakim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nawaina ta'alluma wa ta'alim. Mutadhakura wa tazikir wa naf'a wa lintifa'a. Wa lifada wa listifada. Wa lahatha ala tamasiki bi kitabillahi wa sanati rasulihi. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. Wa dua ila al-huda wa dalala ala al-khair. Ibtigha'a wa jihla. Wa mardatihi wa qurbi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Allahumma inna nasadka al-alma ladunni wa mashabas sufiyan hani. Ya wahab ya ghani. Allahumma inna nasadka al-alma ladunni wa mashabas sufiyan hani. Ya wahab ya ghani. Allahumma inna nasadka al-alma ladunni wa mashabas sufiyan hani. Ya wahab ya ghani. اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما فقه به وامرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف الناجك يا رحم الرحمين اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبيين وحفظ المرسلين وإلهم الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا رحم الرحمين اللهم أغنى بالعلم وزينا بالحم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا رحم الرحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما أقرأه في هذا المجلس ما قبل ما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا رحم الرحيم اللهم أكرمنا من نور فهم وأخرجنا من ظلم الوهم وافتح لنا أبا رحمتك وانجر علينا حكمتك يا رحم الرحيم أمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقالد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه رجع الأمور كلها يا فتاح يا, ف... يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقط من سني فقو قولي وصل لساني وهدي قلبي وعن كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا كما لفتوح العارفين وفق في الدين مع كما الأخصص وصدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاء وخيرة الدارين وعلم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله أو يفزد أوات Sunat, the Sunat, the the apa, the five hundred Sunnah in the prayer, the Sunan, the Salah, five hundred. The Sunnah, Rahmani Rahim. We are on number. Yeah. Okay. Here, right? Okay, let's continue to sit. You pass me my book over there. There, I don't see my seat. We are on number eighty-four. Ninety-one. Oh, ninety-one. Every week, ada ada. For some reason, eh, I forget where we are. 
Okay, 191 dan Vincent kena update. Just to update. 191. Okay. Sunnah Rahman Rahim. Okay, number nine, Sunnah number 91. Um... Uh, we went so we went through the one where uh, for the makmum to hear the to hear the imam kiraatul imam and yes ma'al makmum li kiraatil imam uh, and yes tamia afwan and yes tamia al makmum li kiraatul imam I for the makmum the sunnah I for the makmum to listen to the recitation of the imam and that is sunnah ok number 92 is that for the mazbuk ok what is the mazbuk mazbuk and the mazbuk is the one who uh, entered the prayer later, right? So, meaning that he did not get, he did not get all the uh, raka'at with the imam. Right? That means he missed out lah. And basically the definition of mazbuk is that as long as he... Um, did not get the 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 did not did not get the the fatiha of the first rakat of the imam. Thereafter, he is all considered as mazbuk. Right. So, if someone were to enter, even when the imam is still standing, then you enter the prayer and then you are standing, but you didn't manage to get the fatiha of the imam, which means that the imam actually um, the imam carries your fatiha. Right. So, the imam's fatiha, right? Uh, you you you're somewhat riding on the imam's fatiha. That's what it means, lah. Right, so, so you are with the imam in the, in the situation. Right, so so it, uh, if later on, and this is a very important situation because if ever someone enters into a prayer and the person does not do fatiha, right, but because they, they came in late, the imam somewhat is a tanggung, eh, the imam carries the fatiha. Right, the fatiha is carried by the imam. Right, so whether you enter the prayer standing or ruku, right, because that would mean you don't have to make up that uh, rakat. I don't have to do the, you don't have to do an extra rakat later on I, because the imam the rakat is counted for you the imam carries your fatiha for you I, that is the that is that is uh, the ruling for the mazbuk okay um, if ever a person were to find out somehow or other that the imam uh, was that after the prayer the person finds out that the imam actually was on a hadath and for some for some reason the imam was praying lah, but actually the imam was on hadath. Right. So it could be that the imam that like for a woman the imam began praying and she didn't know that she, that her message had already come. Right. So maybe she uh, she didn't check or whatever, she just prayed and assumed that she had wudu and she was uh, uh she was clean. So so if she prayed in that way, right, so during the prayer she has yaqeen that she is clean and the ma'mum has yaqeen that she that the imam is clean. And because you wouldn't you wouldn't think that someone will be praying and they are on hadas kan? right so it, uh, so if let's say after the prayer right she uh, she realizes that she was praying and she was already in her menses and she didn't, she, it was and only after the prayer she realized that and right? so she didn't realize it after the prayer right so but the prayer already ended okay so now we look at the makmum that is a bit of hiki, eh? and inshallah, when we go into I think Muqaddima Hadramiya, um, there will be more explanation on this part, right? So the prayer has already ended. So the Imam prayed the entire prayer with yaqeen that the ma, eh, sorry, the, uh, the, 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 the yes, the Imam prayed the entire prayer with yaqeen that she is clean, lah, right? And the Ma'mum also prayed the entire prayer with yaqeen that the Imam is clean, right? the Imam is on Bahara, right? If later on the, the Imam says to the Ma'mum. Uh, actually, I am not on Tahara. I just found out that I am, I am on Hadas. Right? So, the, for the Ma'mum, now what to do? The Ma'mum, right, if they had, if they were Mazbuk in the prayer, right, that means the Imam carries any of her Fatiha, right, or part of her Fatiha, then the Ma'mum must pray the prayer again. Right? Because the Imam's prayer was not Sah. 
And because the, the Imam's prayer was not valid. Why? Because the Imam accidentally prayed while she was not uh, on Tahara. Hope you understand that. Eh? And this is important thing about, about the Mazbuk, to understand this issue. Uh, because if, let's say, she was not Mazbuk and she was with the Imam from the very beginning, and she prayed the entire prayer with Yaqeen, the Imam is on Tahara, is on Tahara, and then she finished the prayer. So whatever happens after the prayer is not counted. So meaning that uh, she, her, her prayer is okay. Her salah is okay. Uh, because she prayed the entire prayer uh, with Yaqeen and the Imam. And the Imam's prayer is uh, is, is Sahih. Right? It, is, it, is, uh, it, is, it is valid. I hope that one is clear. And if, if, if anyone is confused by what I just said, and inshallah, when we go into, when we go into inshallah, uh, Sifat Najah or we go into it, um, Qadimah Hadramiyah, right, I will explain this again, right, clearly. Right, so basically, if the Mazbuk enters the prayer, right, Masuk, Masuk Salah enters the prayer, I right, didn't get all the rakats of the Imam, and in fact, maybe he missed a few rakats, uh, or he missed the Fatiha of the Imam, there's a Mazbuk. Right, so it is Sunnah on the Mazbuk, to uh, for the mazbuk to uh, recite and right, in the book it says qada right, recite the surah or recite surahs that he missed in the later rakats okay so what does this mean right, so to recite the surah that he missed right in the later rakats after the imam already uh, uh, finished his prayer. Okay, let me explain this part a bit. Eh. Today I think we did one point. Eh, because this is a bit of uh, fiqih to, uh, to go through. A little bit of fiqih. Right, so here, um, Allahumma sallia ala sallia muhammad. Right, uh, so here, okay, for example, eh, let me just put an example here. An eh, example. Okay. Imam is on the uh, second rakat. Okay. And makmum comes in. Or mazbuk lah. Mazbuk. Okay. Makmum comes in means that this makmum is, is a mazbuk. So mazbuk comes in to the prayer. Right. Okay. We spoke about this before. That the mazbuk follows the imam exactly. So even if the imam is on his second rakat. The mazbuk is, he will follow the imam, but he counts it as his first. Uh, even if he does his atahya and everything, and you must follow the imam, you okay, must follow the imam, but the mazbuk counts that as his first rakat. Right, so maybe it's a zuhur prayer, so it will be four, four rakat prayer. So, which means that, uh, so which means that, right, when the imam finishes, right, the mazbuk has done only three rakat. Okay. So the mazbuk follows the imam exactly. Right. So he has. So he has to do one more. Right. He has to do one more uh, rakat. Right. It's meaning his fourth rakat. Okay. Meaning the fourth rakat. Right. And fourth rakat means that there is the, there is the shahul and there is the in, in the fourth rakat. Okay. However. Right, because he came in, uh, in let me just please try and make this clear. Okay, so fourth rakah. How? What do we understand about the fourth rakah? The fourth rakah we understand is that for a normal situation, right, fourth rakah. Okay. Allah. We have to bring it down now. Okay, that way. Okay, the fourth rakah. Okay. Right, the fourth rakaat. Right, what do we understand about the fourth rakaat? We know that he's not doing a qadda of his first rakaat. Eh? His first rakaat is really done as the second rakaat of the imam. Right, he's done. So he's doing his fourth rakaat. So we know in our usual four rakaats, right, that we only read Fatiha, right? No surah. Right, we don't read a surah after Fatiha. There are um, opinions. Ada, ada, there are different of opinions in Aqwal whereby some of the ulama, they consider that reading a surah in every rakaat is sunnah. Right, so there, 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 is, there are of the um, ulama who say that. Right, the scholars, there are opinions about every single rakaat is sunnah to read a surah after Fatiha. Right, but Shafi'i Mazhab, right, we were in that only the first surah rakaat. Rakaat 1 and Rakaat 2. Right, first Rakaat, we do a surah. 
three and four we don't do any surah. We do Fatiha only. Right? And then we uh, and it's and that is the sunnah that is in the madhab. Right, the first two rakats and not third and fourth. So usually in the fourth rakat, you do Fatiha and no surah, right? and then and do uh, tashahud the akhir. I right? do the final tashahud. So we know lah, eh? do the final tashahud. Okay, this sunnah is that uh, because this person he missed the first rakat with the imam. Right, so which means technically he only read a surah for his second rakat, third rakat then read a surah, right? As right, so he followed the imam in his in the imam's uh, uh, in, he followed the imam, right? So he didn't do a surah. He missed he missed the the first rakat surah lah. Basically, he missed it. Right, so what he can do is that in the fourth rakat he can do a surah after fatiha, and that is sunnah. Right, so if he's doing a fourth rakat because the first first rakat he missed out. On the surah, he can do a short surah after the fatiha because he's no longer following the imam. He is praying. He has the imam has already finished prayer, so he gets up and he prays for rakat. This time, instead of not reading a surah, he will read a surah, right? Because it's a sunnah to read a surah, and because he missed the first rakat surah. I hope that that is clear. <laughs> okay, understand that sunnah. Right, so the sunnah here is there for the for the masbuk, right? To do the surah on what on on in the rakats after the salams. If he missed the surah with the imam from the first and second rakat, okay. Hope that is clear. Okay. <laughs> okay. The next one, I think one more. Eh? So we have three today. Um. Again. Uh. I think it's not much. I'm re- repeated, but it's okay. I put it down. They put it here. So anyway, right. To recite a full surah. That I might have mentioned it in passing. I don't think I typed it out. I mentioned in passing that it is sunnah to read a full surah than to read part of a surah. Right, it's sunnah. Right, so if you want to read a long surah but you know you won't be able to finish the entire surah in the one rakat, right, then you can read that um, that part of the surah. For example, we mentioned at the kursi, right, or yasin, you know, or alif lam mim. Right, so any of this um, of the surahs you can read uh, in your prayers. Right, and then, but because it's not, it's not a full surah. And Surah Baqarah, if you read you know, Alif Lam Min, the first five, the first five ayat, it's not full surah, like, it's only five ayats. Right? Or you read Amman Rasul at the end of uh, your uh, at the end of Surah Baqarah, you read, uh, read Amman Rasul in your prayer. Also can, right? it's part of it's part of uh, Quran. You can read it in your prayer, right? But follow it up with a full surah. You can read Surah Asr or Surah Surah Falak, Surah Nas, Surah Ikhlas. Surah, uh, surah, surah Kausar, any of the short surahs you want to. And if you want to, a longer surah. It's up to you. Right? But it's a sunnah to read a full surah. Um, okay. Uh, okay. The number number 94 is... Okay, one more. <laughs> this one, whenever we stop there. Okay. All right, number... number Actually, all this also awesome that I mentioned earlier, so I can just go through them quickly if I want to. Okay, never mind. Okay, so 94 is to say the basmala. Basmala. Right, even if you started from the middle of a surah, Except for surah, let's say for surah, tawbah. Right, for surah tawbah, there is no sunnah of reading basmala at any point in the surah. Right, so it, uh, like for example, so if let's say you, you were going to read um, Amanda Rasul or you're going to read Ayat Kursi, right, there is a sunnah to actually say the basmala before you begin, the, before you read that part of the surah. So even if it's not um, even even if it's not the beginning of the surah, right, but somewhere in the middle of the surah, you can you can very well just uh, say Bismillah and it's a sunnah. Say Bismillah and then to uh, uh, and and then and then to to continue in that. I right, just one more that I have gone through earlier, number ninety five, which is uh, the first surah, the the surah of the first rakat. To be longer than the surah on the second rakan. 
Right? It seems that like some of the sunnahs, like, macam, they sound the same and, and they sound the same and they have been repeated. Right? It seems as if lah. Right? But uh, the the writer puts them all as separate. But they sound the same, inshallah. <laughs> okay, hope that is clear. Alhamdulillah, we continue with our class. There's one question here. Uh, a masbuk will recite the Fatah Shahud twice. One of the Imam's Faraka and one as their own Faraka. Yes, correct. Right, so um, so the so the so the masbuk who missed the first rakaat kan, and I said there's a riddle. I think I, I asked a riddle before kan in this class. Right, the riddle of um, <laughs> there are fikir riddles lah. Right, the riddle of right, what prayer has four tashahud inside? Right, and the prayer that has four tashahud inside is a masbuk who came in in maghrib prayer, but after the ruku, before the tashahud. Right, so somebody who came in maghrib prayer, prayer second rakaat, after ruku, before tashahud. So this person, how many tashahuds will this person do? She will do the first one with the imam, right? Because imam is second rakaat, so she's in the first one. But she follows the imam. She does that one. That rakaat is not counted because she came after ruku. And then she will do another one with the imam. Imam does a third rakaat, imam does a tashahud. Right, so she will also do, she will also do tashahud, kan? I hope you all understand. Right. Uh, yeah. And then, <laughs> I will answer the question in a while. And then, um, so after the Imam finished his third rakaat, she will stand up and she will do her second rakaat. Because the first one is not counted, she came in after ruku. Right? Only the third one, she was, her rakaat is counted. She will stand up and do two more rakaats. And each of these rakaats, she will have a tashahud. So she does four tashahuds all together in her prayer. Okay, alright. Uh, so many questions here. Let me just answer. Um, explain again number four. Say basmala in the middle, right? Uh, so okay, you finish your fatiha. Right now, you want to recite ayat kursi. Okay, ayat kursi is not the beginning of a surah. Right, it's in the middle of surah Baqarah. Right, in fact, in the third juz. So it's sunnah to still say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum right, so you you don't just like after after surah fatiha and you go wala allin amin it's a sunnah to say bismillahirrahmanirrahim instead of going straight away uh, after wala allin amin you go straight into Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum ah uh, so sunnah, the sunnah is you say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and then you say Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum uh, even though ayat kursi is not at the beginning of the uh, surah. Okay, um, okay, dua iftitah is only for the first rakaat. There's a question here. Now, does someone need to recite dua iftitah for the fourth rakaat to cover the first rakaat that he missed? No. Dua iftitah, the only time dua iftitah is sunnah is when you begin the prayer on your first um, rakaat, right, on your first rakaat, uh, and you have not said anything at all. You didn't say Bismillah, you didn't say A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, you didn't say anything at all. You go straight away into Allahu Akbar Kabira, Alhamdulillahi Kathira, Wa Subhanallah, Bukata Wa Asila. Right, that is the only time when Dua Iftitah is Sunnah. Thereafter, all the other rakaats, there is no Sunnah. Of doing doa iftitah, even if you have missed it, there is no more sunnah. The sunnah is just right at the beginning right, of the uh, of the prayer. Okay, um, okay. If you want to read the sunnah doas after the shahud, is it in this tashahud or the last final one? Uh, it's up to you. Um, especially if if the imam is taking a long time reading his tashahud. Uh, and doing all the du'as after the shahud before salams, then you might as well. You might as well do the du'as since it's, um, it is, it is uh, mustajab. So you might as well do all your du'as and then when the imam gives salams, right, then you uh, you stand up for your next rakaat. And you can do your own du'a after that also. It's up to you. <laughs> I, I mean, mustajab is, you can, you can do it as many times as you want. Eh? It's more mustajab. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Okay. Uh, we are on right now. Okay, this Allahumma salli ala sallam. Okay, we are on here. Okay. Turning and coming. <coughs> oh, dua after azan. I mean, dua after azan. 
not reach the end. Okay, tamam. Right. Okay, so I hope that as we go through this book, uh, those who have not memorized his du'as, uh, please memorize the du'as. The du'as after azan, the du'a after your prayer, the du'a after the shahu before salam. Right. So as and the whole point, you know, in, in these books is for us to amalkan, right? for us to act on what they had, the, uh, on what the sheikh or, the, or the, the, the habib has informed us about. Right? And you can buy this book for those who are new. You can go and buy this book at uh, Ewarda Books. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so, it, there is a sunnah right, of after adhan to give the salawat unto Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, so, dua ma ba'dal adhan. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallim. Wa ala sa'ir al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen wa tabi'ihim bi ihsan ila yawmiddin. Allahumma rabba hadhi da'wat tamah wa salat al-qa'imah. Adi Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al-Wasil al-Fadila Wa al-Sharafa wa dajl al-Alit al-Rafi'ah Wa ba'athu al-Maqam al-Mahmul Ladi wa'ta'ahu ya arham al-Rahim Wa inna la tukhliful al-Ni'ad This is from a hadith Whereby Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said right, In the day on the day of judgment right, There is uh, There is this place right, Called Wasila right, So Wasila uh, It is a place It's a Maqam al-Mahmud Right, it is a place whereby only one of Allah's creation will will make it there. Right, only one person right, will uh, will uh, will will make it to this place Wasila or in Maqam al Mahmud right, in, uh, in in the next world. And he said, and this place, this station right, where a person where someone can 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 make it to right, it can it, from that place a person can do shafa'a right, or he can intercede. For as many people as he wants. And of course, all by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and he wishes, right, or he hopes, right, he hopes that it will be him right, who will be at this station. Of course, it will be him because he is the best of Allah's creation. There's nobody who is better than him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But of course, we know that whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you know, I hope, right, I hope that these people uh, will believe, or I hope. Right, that um, that maybe their children, you know, will be believers in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, or when they say, you know, I hope, right, that uh, that I will be given this maqam al mahmud and this wasila on a day of uh, on a day of judgment. Right, so when when he says I hope, it's all his adab with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and his etiquette with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, so he uh, he. He says it in that way last. So it's not saying that confirm it's me, you know, or like, for sure it's me, right? But we all know it's him. So, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's nobody else who should be there or who can be there, and then there's nobody else that we hope to be there also because we want the most merciful of Allah's creation to be there, right? So He will intercede for us, inshallah. We don't want anybody else to 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 stand in that position again, right? But anyway, He says, Rasulullah alaihi wasallam, that whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa taala to give him wasila. After the adhan, then uh, on the day of judgment, he will intercede for this person. In the hadith, uh, so Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam said uh, in a hadith uh, that whoever comes with a slawat, uh, so that means they hear, uh, they, uh, they, they hear the adhan uh, and then they continue the adhan with a uh, with slawat. And when I was in Syria, they would do two slawats because there are narrations about two slawats. I uh, do it twice. Right, so and it's up to a person. You can do it ten times. Um, the more stars you do, the better. Uh, the better for you. Right, so the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith that when you hear the muazzin, إذا سمعت إذا سمعت مل muazzin فقولوا مثل ما يقول. Right, so if you hear the muazzin, right, then say as what he says. Then ثم صلوا عليا. Right, then send stars onto me. And then he says, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ صَلَّى عَلَيَّ صَلَاةً صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِهَا عَشَرًا And he says, for surely, whoever sends salawats onto me one time, then Allah will send ten salawats onto him. ثُمَّ سَلُوا اللَّهُ لِي الْوَسِيلَةِ And then after sending salawats onto me, so Rasulullah said, after sending salawats onto me, then ask Allah for الْوَسِيلَة for me. Right, so ask Allah to give me al-wasila. Al-wasila is the maqam, the maqam al-mahmud. Right, uh, it is the highest maqam in the day on the day of judgment. So you say, ask Allah to give me wasila. 
Then he says, "Fa innaha manzilatun fil jannati la la tam la tambari illa li abdin min ibadillah." And he says, he says, "For surely it is a place in paradise that only one of Allah's slaves will be there. Like only one person can fit can 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 be there. Nobody else uh, can can go there. Only one, only for one of Allah's slaves. And slaves meaning counting all the angels and the mountains and the whatever's in paradise, the hurlain, everything uh, of Allah's creation. The best of them is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Um, then he says, "Wa'arju an akuna ana huwa," I, and he says, that, "And I and I and I hope that I am the one. I am I'm I'm that I'm that person lah who will be at wasila." And then he says, "Allahu alaihi wasallam, فَمَنْ سَأَلَ لِلْوَصِيلَةَ حَلَّتْ لَهُ الشَّفَاعَةَ." Right, so he says, and whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me, al-wasila, right, it will be permissible for him to get the shafa'ah, right, to get the intercession. And there is um, riwayat Imam Muslim, right, that was uh, from, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, in another narration, right, after, the, the, after, the, after the adhan, to say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. وعلى سائر الأنبياء والمرسلين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. And there's a specific slawat to say after uh, after the adhan. Right, so if you cannot, um, if you can remember this longer slawat, it's a bit longer. Right, it's, it's, it's something you might hear often also. I right, have to continue by saying وعلى سائر الأنبياء والمرسلين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. Right, it's there in the book anyway. Right, so you can memorize that longer slawat. So instead of saying Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad after, after the azan, you say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam wa sallim wa ala sa'il al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen wa tabi'ihim bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. Right, so then, um, then he says, right, so then you say Allahumma rabba hadhi da'ahi tamah O Allah, the Lord of this uh, complete call. وَالصَّلَاةِ الْقَائِمَةِ And the prayer that is to be stood up. آتِي سَيْدِنَا مُحَمَّدًا Give our leader Muhammad الْوَسِيلَةَ وَالْفَضِيلَةِ الْوَسِيلَةِ The place uh, the place وَسِيلَةَ الْفَضِيلَةِ uh, uh, And the place of uh, فَضِيلَةَ Of virtue وَالشَّرَفَ الدَّرَجَةِ وَالشَّرَفَ And honor وَالدَّرَجَةَ الْعَانِتَ الرَّفِيعَةِ And a very high station وَبَعَثْهُ الْمَقَامَ الْمَحْمُودِ And place him in the station of Mahmud. And Mahmud is one who is praised. الَّذِي وَعَدْتَهُ The place that you have promised him. إِنَّكَ لَا تُخْلِفُ الْمِعَادِ For surely you never go against your promise. In another, in another riwayat, Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah radiyallahu anhu, he said, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qala hina yasma'un nida'a Whoever says when he hears the call, the call meaning the prayer, so whoever says uh, when he hears the call, uh, after the prayer, the azan, Allahumma rabba hadhi da'wati tamah wa salati laqa'ima ati muhammadan wal wasilat wal fadila wa ba'azahu maqaman mahmoonan nadhi wa addahu Right, so whoever says all of this, حَلَّتْ لَهُ شَفَاعَةِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Right, uh, from the reward of, if, from the riwayat Imam Bukhari. Right, he says that whoever says this part, so this, this dua after azan is from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the exact wording, is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, so it becomes halal for him, or becomes permissible for him, uh, my shafa'ah, the shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, 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 the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawm al-qiyamah on the day of judgment. Imam Ahmad also has a similar uh, narration where Imam Ahmad narrates man qala hina yunadi al-munadi whoever says whenever the caller says Allahumma rabba hadhi da'udda amma wa sallatil ghaima salli ala muhammadin warda anhu ridan la tasakhatu ba'dahu istajab allahu lahu da'watah this is a slightly different reward from Imam Ahmad. Imam Ahmad narrates that Rasulullah wasallam said, whoever says when when the caller calls, he says, Allahumma rabbaha dhi da'wati tamma. 
was Salatil Qa'imah, right? Oh Allah, the Lord of this complete call and the prayer that has been established. Salli ala Muhammad, right? Very short slawat, eh? Salli ala Muhammad. Send slawats on to Muhammad. Warda anahu ridan la tasakhatu ba'dahu. Right? And, and, and grant him your pleasure, your rida, eh? The rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Grant him your pleasure, and that you'll never be a, a pleasure that you'll never be angry after that. And you'll never be angry thereafter. And whoever says this, then their du'as is mustajab. And Allah will answer their du'as. And there is a hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that du'a, uh, a du'a la yuraddu bayn al-azani wal-iqamah fad'u. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that du'a is not rejected between azan and iqamah. So make your du'as, right? do your du'as. And it is by an, um, uh, where, where, where Rasulullah said in another hadith, right, that uh, a du'a by an azan wal iqama mustajabun. Fada'u. Right, the du'a between azan and iqama, it is mustajab. So du'a. And du'a as much as you want. That is one of the, um, like uh, a loss, right? If someone does not have azan in their lives, Right, so we we miss out five times a day this this uh, golden opportunity that happens between every azan and iqama right, is the point of dua mustajab. Right, there is also another hadith by na kulli azanain salatun liman sha. There is a there is a hadith that between every two azans, two azans meaning azan and iqama. Right, this is the way they speak in Arabic. When they say azanain, they mean azan and iqama. When they say aisha'ain or aisha'ain, they mean maghrib and isha. And two isha. Basically, it means maghrib and isha. They don't mean two ishas. Um, so, when they say azanain, it means two azans. So, between two azans. So, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bayna kulli azanain salatun liman sha'a. Right, there is a prayer between every two azan. Means anyone who wants to pray qabriya right, between between um, azan and iqama, they can. Right, every prayer there is a qabriya to be prayed if anybody wants to do so. Right, so especially if you're waiting for the jama'ah, you can do a qabriya. Right, so uh, and some people might some people you know they have um, uh, the wrong opinion that there is no qabriya uh, for. Maghrib and Aisha. Right? The the Sunnah that is the Sunnah prayer the Sunnah prayer that is uh, that that is what do you call it? Allahumma sallallahu alaihi wasallam Muhammad muakkad. The Sunnah muakkada right, is the one that is after. Right? So so the Baadiyah of Maghrib and the Baadiyah of Isha the one is muakkada. Right? The Qabliya is, is there. Right? There is Qabliya Maghrib and there is Qabliya Isha. Right? But it's just that it's not muakkada and and usually because Maghrib is prayed early in the time. Uh, usually, people do the qabriya after the prayer maghrib, and that is permissible. You can do qabriya after the prayer itself. It's not qada; it is it is ada. Uh, it is it is correct to do that. You, you can you can do that. And so usually, when they pray maghrib, they pray maghrib first, then they pray the two rak'ahs qabriya after maghrib, and then they pray the ba'diya after maghrib, and then they pray the awabin after maghrib. Then, mashallah, they do whoever strives. Then, for them, is more in the in the next world in the day, on the day of judgment. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so he says here that the dua is mustajab. Right, so, uh, the, uh, so the people of knowledge have said that the, whenever you come into a time whereby someone says to you, now dua mustajab, right, whereby it's raining or whereby, you know, you, you're in a majlis or like when we just did Ratib al-Haddad, that is one part whereby you go, Allahumma salli wa sallim. And in fact, if you were to go to, you know, uh, to, to Tarim or other parts of the world, right, whereby whenever they, they say, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim, Allahumma salli wa sallim, and they stop there, that means right now, dua mustajab. Right? So they, they, will, they will stop to allow people to dua whatever they want to dua. Right? And then they will, uh, uh, after giving like maybe about, Three minutes to five, depending on like, uh, three to five minutes of of silence where everyone makes their dua, right, and then they will continue the azkar. Right, so whenever you hear you know, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Allahumma Salli wa Sallim, and they stop there, right, that means dua, uh, dua right now. 
And so, and they said that the first thing you should do about, and we went through this, I think, a f- uh, last week or a few weeks ago, right, the first thing you should be do about are your parents. I will never do mustajab. The first word that should come up, that should come to your mouth, would be Rabbi Fuli wa di walidaya. Or Rabbi Fuli wa di walidaya. Warahamhum kama rabbauna sigara. And you can do that dua at the point of or Rabbi Fuli wa di walidaya. Or Rabbi Fuli wa di walidaya. And we went through the difference before, kan? Uh, in, in, I think it was at the masjid itself. I went to the difference between, between wali wali diya and wali wali daya. Uh, wali wali daya is for two parents. And wali wali diya uh, is for ancestors. And then, so, so your grandparents and so on. Everybody, everybody gets a dua lah. InsyaAllah. Rabbi Fili wali wali diya or wali daya before okay. Rab, uh, warham huma. Huma will be for two people. Warham hum. Will be for many people. Kama Rabbayani, Rabbayani for two people. Rabbauna or Rab, uh, for many people. If you want to do this, do, do it that way lah. And it's said to do it five times. Right. Rabbil Khuli, Wali Wali, Daya, Wali Wali Daya, five times. I right. after and after the fifth time, you say Warham Huma Kama Rabbayani Sagira. So you say it five times. Rabbil Khuli, Wali Wali Daya, Rabbil Khuli, Wali Daya, Rabbil Khuli, Wali Daya, Rabbil Khuli, Wali Daya, Rabbil Khuli, Wali Daya, five times. Warhamhuma kama rabbayani sagira. And then you make that you make a general dua for all forms of goodness. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-'afwa wal-'afiyah wal-mu'afata ad-da'ima fi ad-din wa ad-dunya wal-akhirah. And you hear this dua um, being said if you if you in some in some countries in in many countries after the azan they will the 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 muazzin will read out the dua uh, out loud. Yeah, MashaAllah. They do, they, do the, they do the salawat out loud, they do the dua after azan out loud, and they will do the dua after the dua after azan out loud. So people learn, like, what, what do you dua for when someone says to you, dua musajab, dua. And you think, what to dua? <laughs> yeah, MashaAllah. So you dua this one lah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah. Oh Allah, we ask you for forgiveness and good health. وَالْمُعَافَةَ الدَّائِمَةَ فِي الدِّينِ وَالدُّنْيَا وَالْأَخِرَةِ right? And then forgiveness all, uh, all together in this world and the next world, uh, in, in our religion, in this world and the next world. Right? Sayyidina Anas radiyallahu anhu uh, said that a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day. And he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ayu dua afdal. You say, oh Rasulullah, what is the best dua? And mashallah, alhamdulillah, and we praise uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having the sahaba ask all these kind of questions. Alhamdulillah. I mean, it's a, it's a very good question because you all now living in later times. You just want to ask the same question. What do I do? Eh? What, what, when it's dua, mustajab, what should I do? Eh? And what do I say? That covers for everything. Right? So, so he says, uh, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tas, uh, he says, Tas'alu rabbaka al-afwa wal-afiyata fi dunya wal-akhira. I say, ask Allah for forgiveness and good health. Afia. Afia is good health in dunya and akhirat. I so it's not just uh, good health in your physical sense, but good health in every sense, especially in your heart, uh, in your in your spiritual sense. Uh, good, good and healthy spiritual uh, or good and healthy soul uh, inside of you. Right, the afa wal afia fi dunya wal akhira. Right, and then um, and the men came the next day to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Mashallah, Sahaba. Right, they're, they're very Mashallah. They're, they're, they're very, one of the most beautiful things about the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that they were always um, they were always keep asking about goodness. And they want to know more and more and more of what they can do to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they really made full use of being sahaba, you think you, you can say that. Like that they, they know they're around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They know that you know, they can ask anything they want to ask like, and, he can, and he will answer them and give them. So even if they want tips, right? they want like, shortcuts, they want... You know, and they were, they, were, they were sahabas who did that. They said, Ya Rasulullah, Islam is becoming, becoming very heavy on me. Teach me something that is easy that I can follow. You know, and they, in a sense, they're asking for, for just um, something easy. Like, give me something easy because I find it very difficult. And then, mashallah, you know, and you find it towards the end of time, till, till the day of judgment, there will always be people in the Ummah of Rasulullah who will need that. And they will need, uh, like, give, give us easy tips. 
like give us you know something uh, that I can just you know, do it easily you know without without much fuss you know or or I can memorize easily or I can you know they they will, they will say these kind of things to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he will give them right to make it easy and then and, and then mashallah may Allah reward them greatly on our behalf that they will tell people they will inform they will transmit right the du'as from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this person the first day he asked this question what is the best du'a and then Rasulullah said uh, say uh, ask your lord al-'afwa wal-'afiya fi dunya wal-akhirah so the next day he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, which dua is the best dua? <laughs> Same question, eh? Mashallah. I end Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Tas'alu rabbaka al-'afwa wal-'afiya fi dunya wal-akhirah. Same answer. And he says that, you know, ask your Lord for forgiveness and for good health in dunya and akhirah. And then he came on the third day, <laughs> Mashallah. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, which is the best dua? Same question again, eh? three times, mashallah. And you see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's so patient. You know, we all, like, people ask us the same question for, for, for more than one time already. It's so, um, mashallah, eh? like, no, lack, lack patience. Like, ask, I answer it yesterday, why you ask again? <laughs> mashallah. We all, we all are like that. We all, you know, we, we just, we just say, so yesterday say it, right? You know, today ask again. And mashallah, Rasulullah Rasul, 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 simply answered the question. And he does not scold people or blame people or you know say like you can't remember or you know like or you know um, shame people in any way whatsoever. He just answers the question. Right, so he said, which is du'a is the best. So much to learn from the character of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sometimes you feel, like you feel so, mashallah, so far from his character. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's so patient and so understanding, so cheerful, so giving. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so he says, Ya Rasulullah, you know, which du'a is the best? Right, and he says that you ask. تَسْأَلُ رَبَّكَ الْعَفَ وَالْعَافِيَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا عُطِيتَهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا ثُمَّ عُطِيتَهُمَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحْتَ Right, so Rasulullah said, again he answered the question, he said, let us your Lord for afwa and afia. I ask for this, right, for forgiveness and for good health. فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Right, in dunya and akhirah. And he said, and if you are given these two things, afwa and afia, in the dunya, and then you are given these two things, afwa and afia, in the akhirah, you are successful. Right, that's it. And you're done. You know, that's, that's all, mashallah, that you, that you have to, that you need, that, that, that's all you need to ask about. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. Right, there is, um, if you notice in the Ratib al Haddad, Right, at the point at the point where we go Allahumma salli wa sallim and then you keep quiet again. And then um there's a silence whereby you do you do your du'as. Then right after that, right, there is a du'a that you do. I whereby you say Allahumma inna nasli rida ka wa jannah wa na'uzu bika min sakhatika wa nar. I right, do three times that du'a uh, thereafter. That one came from another narration whereby one of the companions came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I, and he's and he he like mashallah mashallah he was he seemed worried right? he said that he said that you know I see you know people when 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 it's time to make dua they make all kinds of dua and they and they go into you know like a long pause of making duas a lot of duas and he said I don't know what to dua right? so I just said you know Allahumma inna sakarilah kawal jannah wa naoons become a sakhti kawal nar say oh Allah I ask you for your rida for your for your for your pleasure. Wal Jannah and Paradise, wa and we and I seek your and we seek your protection, min sakatika wa na from your anger and from the hellfire. Right, so you said that to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's all I say. I don't know what else to say. I just say this. Right, I say I want Allah's reda and I want Paradise, and I don't want him to be angry with me, and I don't want the hellfire, and I and that's my dua. And the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that is all of dua. And all du'a that anybody can make in this world basically comes down to this, right? That you want Allah's reda, you want paradise, you don't want his sakhat, you don't want his uh, his anger, and you don't want uh, the hellfire, right? That's all. This this one du'a has basically summarized all the other du'as, you know, mashallah. And but of course, you know, it is um uh, it's not to say that you know you shouldn't be making long du'as. You can make as long as you want. Right? It's up to you. Right? But don't uh, fall short of doing these 
other du'as that are fully comprehensive, uh, comprehensive du'as. Uh, so Rasulullah SAW mentioned that du'as between azan and iqama is mustajab, so make du'a. Uh, so the first one is your parents, you ask for good health and, and happiness, right? and then you can ask for forgiveness for uh, uh, for those who, have, who, are, who are married, forgiveness for your husband and then your in-laws, um, and then for your families, your relatives, your cousins, uh, your siblings, your children, your descendants, your ascendants, uh, so, uh, your, your, your ancestry. Uh, so make dua for all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives, inshaAllah. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Okay. Then our next part and of this uh, of the book, we have the dua, dua al qiyam min al majlis, dua of standing up from a majlis. So he says uh, from the book of the Musharrafa, the Alam al Habib Amar bin Muhammad bin Asari bin Hafiz. ونفعنا حفظه الله تعالى ونفعنا الله به وبعلم في الدارين إلى أن قال دعاء دعاء قيام من المجلس إذا أردت القيام من المجلس فقول سبحانك اللهم ربنا وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك دعاء of rising from a majlis which means um, which means Subhanakallahumma said, Oh Allah, you are most perfect Rabbana, oh our Lord Wa bihamdika And by praising you Ashadu Allah Ilaha illa anta I, I bear witness There is no There is no God except you Astaghfiruka I seek your forgiveness Wa atubu ilaik And I repent to you And I turn back to you Okay, the hadith about this du'a, and in this du'a you can find it in your in the in the blue book, and I think the translation as well is in the blue book, right? Uh, is is with you. Right, so this du'a is basically um, kafaratul uh, uh, du'a tasbih. It's called tasbihul kafara. Right, tasbihul kafara, whereby uh, whatever happened in the majlis, your sins will be forgiven. And mashallah, you know, it is um, our teachers will say that whenever you come and you sit with anybody. Or you go and visit anybody. It's a very good uh, tip, right? if, especially like during Hari Raya, during, during Eid, you know, Majlis, during uh, weddings, right? when you go and visit, when you go for, for, for visitations to people's houses, that when before you sit down, you sit down with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So when you, as you sit down, you do the Basmala, you do the Salawat, inshallah, it will protect the Majlis from any form of backbiting and lying and gossiping and slander. Right, so because you don't want these things to enter into your majlis. So when you sit down with your relatives, with your cousins, your friends, and whoever it is, that, and especially if you know that the conversation will somehow enter into the topic of other people, right, talking about other people. Right, so if you are so scared, you know, that it will, that will happen, you don't want that to happen, especially if you know, you know, like, like a particular friend has, uh, has uh, an unhappiness, with another particular friend, right? so you know, confirm every time I meet her and it's just two of us, she will talk about that person. Right? She will talk about that person for sure and I don't know how to escape right, from the backbiting or slander. So you say, uh, you say Bismillah and you do Salawat right? and then you sit down. And then after, and then, and then during, the, during the, your, your, your gathering, try your best to protect your tongue from saying anything that is uh, sinful. Right, so, while you have already said the Bismillah and the Salawat as protection to help you, and there is kafara to measure, there's the speak kafara later on, right, but you still have to put in effort right, to not have the conversation enter into uh, issues about other people that they might they might dislike. And, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, so, it, when you then when you get up on the majlis you say subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashhadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik and that would mean uh, that they will have any of the sins that happen in that majlis especially even if there's, if there's no slander or biting or talking about other people but there could be like laghwi and right? laghwi meaning there is some form of heedlessness you know of forgetfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you know um, obsession with the dunya that kind of thing that might have happened in that majlis Right, so you do your tasbih kafara, right, and it will wipe out right, whatever khilal, you know, whatever uh, deficiencies or gaps in the majlis that happen, uh, and then you forget about the hereafter. 
So, so he says here, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. So, it's called kafaratul majlis or kafaratun nil majlis. Right, whereby it was narrated by Abi Barzata al-Aslami radiyallahu anhu who said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqulu bi uh, bi akharatin idha arada an yaquma min al-majlisi and he says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say as the last word and the last thing that he would say and before um, standing up from a majlis he would say subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anda astaghfurka wa atubu ilaik and so when he said that and it was something that the sahaba they used to hear and mashallah you know, some of the sahaba they would just hear whatever some uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says or does and they would just memorize and follow so they won't ask questions. They will just memorize and they follow. And then there are those who will ask questions. You know, mashallah. So they have like, the biggest sahabas, as in Abu Bakr, as in Umar, right, and so on. Whereby they will just, whatever they hear Rasulullah do, they will just copy with no questions. Right? Means whatever he does is correct, is good. Like, it doesn't matter what is the, you know, like, when he says that for them, it's enough that he has done it. And then they are of the company, especially the Bedouins, right? And so the Aisha also was like that. They will ask questions. They say, why do you do that? Now, what is the reward? And what is the, uh, the the result? What is the and the mashallah? And because there are people in the ummah, whereby for some people it is just enough for them to just follow, and for some people they need the extra incentive, right? So you can so when if they know the reward behind it, uh, then they will uh, they they feel more motivated lah to memorize and to ensure that they do it, right? So there was a man there, and the man said, Ya Rasulullah. That, you know, for surely you always say these words, right? When you want to stand up from, uh, from, from a majlis, right? You, you will say these words, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shudu la ilaha ila anta astaghfirka wa atubu ilai. Right? So whenever you, you want to stand up, you will say these words. Why do you do so? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, right, It is kafaratun lima yakunu fil majlis. Right? It is to cover up. It's a kafara. Right? It is to cover up whatever happened in the majlis, right, that needs covering up. Lah. Right, so, especially, so we mentioned about whether there was sin going on or whether there was heedlessness going on, right, whether at least he has some zikr in the majlis. Right, if there was no zikr whatsoever in the majlis, no slawat, no remembrance of the hereafter, nothing, it was an empty majlis. At least at the very end of the majlis, right, you say some zikr. And this is the zikr lah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashtu ala ilaha ila anta. Astaghfirka wa atubu ilaik. And of course, uh, to reset Surah Asr as well. Right? Because um, uh, Surah Asr will remind people right, that, pe- that, that, that time will witness over you. That we waste time. Right? That human, most human beings are wasters of time. Right? We, or most human beings are, are, are losers. You know, they have lost a lot you know, of time. Except for the one who believes and does good deeds and advises to what is true and advises to uh, to, to patients. And mashallah, you know, um, for some reason, mashallah, that, that whenever we come for a majlis ilmu, and whenever we come for a class, you know, majlis ilmu, that only then we remember to do tasbih kafara and suratul asr after the majlis. Whereas the majlis ilmu, the what well, is very good and we must do it and we should be doing it we should be doing it all the time right after every majlis but majlis ilmu is filled with ilmu <laughs> you know mashallah and majlis ilmu and majlis, uh, majlis, uh, majlis of knowledge and it's filled with knowledge mashallah and it's filled with, with zikr and it's filled with, with slawat and reminders right the majlis itself is not a majlis of of, of backbiting and slander and, and lying and heedlessness you know and emptiness it's a majlis inshallah it's a good majlis right? and then you will do the tasbih kafara after the majlis but majlis that really need us to do this <laughs> after the majlis will be when you hang out with your friends, when you chat with your cousins, when you go to your family relative's house, right? and these things happen, and this dosa, you know, that there are sins that happen in the majlis. And that is when tasbih kafara is actually very important to do. And suratul asr is very important for us to do. Right? So, mashallah, eh? like, you think about it, kan? because we always do it for, for majlis that is that is good anyway, you know, mashallah. And, it, and you, make it, you make it better by, by, by following the sunnah of Rasulullah Islam. But not to be uh, unmindful of forgetting or, you know, or not to forget to do it when you should be doing it. Right? When you are, you know, having coffee with your cousin or having coffee with your 
you know your friends you know going out coffee bean or going out makan everything right you should be doing this because her and so to ask her after the majlis right? because of the many things that can happen in that majlis that is not that, that is not the best thing right to have been said or to have happened alhamdulillah All right, so that was the riwayat by Imam Ahmad. Let me just finish the page, then we can uh, stop our class. Then, the, any questions? Allahumma sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad said, "Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu." He said that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Kalimatun la yatkalamu bihinna ahadun fi majlisihi inda qiyamihi thalatha thalatha marat illa kufir bihinna anhu." ولا يقول ولا يقولهن في مجلس خير ومجلس ذكر إلا ختم له بهن عليه كما يختم بال بالخاتم على السحيفة سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك أشرب إمام الرواية إمام أبو داود Right, so here he says, right, that words, these are words that if anyone who says these words, any one of you says these words, right, in his majlis, when he wants to get up from his majlis, and he says three times. This is why, you know, for some majlis, they will say three times. And then they will say, Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ishtu la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah to do like, and we should start doing it three times from now on, eh. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ishtu la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah wa atubu ilai. Right, three times. Right, and then uh, get up from the majlis. Uh, accept that by these words, right, that whatever he has said, right, in this majlis that is, that is uh, wrong, right, or un, uh, basically undesired, undesirable, right, th- then he will be forgiven. And then he says, And if it's said at the end of a good majlis, like a class, you know, or a zikr, a majlis of zikr, you know, then then these words, right, because they, because if it's a if it's a majlis if it's a majlis of khair and zikr, then there is no, inshallah, right, no sins right, that happen in that majlis. So this zikr becomes like a like a seal, right, whereby you seal up a risala, right. So whereby you seal up a letter, you know, or a, or a, or an envelope. It right, becomes like a seal where it will not be broken. Right, so it will, will cover up right, and be sent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, for Allah to a reward. Right, so for good measures, it becomes like a seal. S-E-A-L. Eh, seal. Right, um, and for a majlis that is other than good majlis, like an empty majlis, then it becomes a, for, uh, a form of forgiveness right, for the person. Alhamdulillah. And for the people who are in the majlis. Right, so do your family... And do your friends a, a big favor by reminding uh, everyone uh, in the majlis or in the in your house uh, to do tasbih kafara and suratul asr uh, when they get up from the majlis. Should put up stickers around eh, in the house <laughs> or put it on a frame or something before they leave the house. You know, at least they you know they do the, the tasbih right? and then you can cut clear whatever sins happen in that majlis. Alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, we'll stop there for today. It's written 40. Alhamdulillah. Anyone has any questions? Any questions? Oh, there are questions here. Mm. Okay. Uh, question about du'as. Right? Is it good to be specific in your du'as? Right? You can be specific in your du'as. Uh, what is important about du'as is that you must have full yaqeen. And you must have full certainty in your du'as. Right? So, if being specific uh, brings full certainty, for example, Ya Allah, f- uh, uh, have, or say, Ya Allah, cure my father, and then you say the name of the person. So, of course, Allah knows who's your father. right? Um, but to do to say the name of your father, it can make, bring more yaqeen. Right? So, more, more yaqeen right, to your du'a, and you believe completely that Allah can cure him. You know, or ease the matters for him and so on. Right, so you can be specific in that case. Right, however, um, to you, even even if you do specific to us, you should be doing general to us as well. Right, and cure every believer who is in uh, who is suffering physically or spiritually or mentally or emotionally. You may do us for everybody. Sekali, right. So because that is a uh, it's a way in Arabic, whereby you mention everybody. Then you mention specific individuals that you uh, that you care more that you care about or that or they have a right over you, 
uh, or you mention specific individuals and then you mention everybody. Right, so that is a way of, of making dua. Eh? Uh, Rasulullah SAW used to do it that way also. And you can find in, in, in the story of Nabi Nuh, then Nabi Nuh, he, will, he made dua for his parents, then he made dua for all of believers. Right, so that is a way of, um, it's a form of balagha. It's a form of eloquence in Arabic. And it also shows you know, uh, that, you, that you want to fulfill the rights of your parents. Right, other well-known duas, um, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, you can do any dua, right? So, so um, emphasizing one or two duas in the book that how Habib has done does not exclude any other duas. But basically, he gives a like he he, he gives a um, a guideline. Right? These duas don't be uh, heedless of these duas. Don't be unmindful of these duas. Do these duas. Right? And if you want to do other duas, Rabbana Adina fi dunya is from the Quran. You can do so uh, uh, as much as you want. Uh, you can do Rabbana um, Duzi Qulubana. If you want to do that, you can do Rabbana Habana Min Azwajina. You can do that one also. Right? So basically, um, emphasis on specific duas does not exclude other duas. Right? Other duas are also to be done. Um, okay, Tasbih Kafara. Right, the sunnah is it for only one person to do it or for everyone to do it? Basically, it's a tasbih. Right, it is a zikr. So whoever um, does it gets a reward, lah. You know, mashallah. Okay. Right, so it's 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 a subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashhadu alla ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Right, so it, um, if I do it, then I get a reward. If you do it, you get the reward. Right, so so it is and it's astaghfiruka. You know, I seek your forgiveness. Ya Allah. Right, so um, it's, it's best that everyone does it. Right, while, while, inshallah, the sins are all forgiven if one person does it. Right, but the ones who don't do it, then they lose out right, on the reward. <laughs> they might as well do it. <laughs> right, especially if they were the ones who were doing the backbiting and the slandering. They should all the more be doing it. Right, so it's to remind yourselves uh, that, you, that you will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, alhamdulillah, we stop there for today. Wa sallahu ala sallina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Al-Fatiha anna Allah yarzukna manafi'an wa amalana khazim wa musta'alim. Wa dalala an huda wa yusuru bihi qawbin nabi Muhammad sallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa ila arwahi wa alihi mina mushikhina. Wa zabir hakuki alayna wa ila ahadrati nabi Muhammad sallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa al-asr inna l-insan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ishtu ala ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ishtu ala ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ishtu ala ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Subhanakallahu ala sallina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah khair. Terima kasih Ustazah Terima kasih Assalamualaikum Waalaikumsalam Warahmatullah Jazakallah khair Jazakallah khair Jazakallah khair